Hi, I'm Ray Shane and welcome back to Everybody 3D Prints. In a comment to our assembly video for the FL Sun QQ Delta printer, Sean Mandel asks, will it print TPU? And I thought, what a great question. I don't know the answer to that. So why don't we test it? Well, here we go. So I think it's always good to start a new topic with a definition of terms. Um, flexible filaments are a bit of a misnomer in some cases. The filaments that are advertised as flexible usually rate themselves according to the Shore Hardness Scale. The Shore Hardness Scale doesn't actually give you a flexibility rating, it gives you a softness rating. So uh, a material can be soft but it doesn't necessarily make it flexible, although usually the two, when it comes to plastics, are hand in hand. Um, the filaments are usually advertised as TPE, TPU, TPC. Um, the TP in those designations is thermoplastic. So all filaments are TP. They're all thermoplastic. They all get modified with heat. The last letter is really more of an indication of what they are. So TPU is thermoplastic urethane. That's a form of, of polyurethane or, or urethane type plastic that is softer. Um, TPE is the general designation. It's thermoplastic elastomere. The elastomere meaning that it's a stretchable or soft plastic. The Shore Hardness Scale, as I said, measures the hardness of the material. So uh, Ninja Flex, which is a, uh, a very popular uh, and one of the original flexible plastics, has a shore hardness of, I believe, 85. I don't happen to have Ninja Flex in stock, but I do have Maker Flex from Maker Geeks. Maker Flex is a TPEE. They don't say exactly what it was uh, derived from or what the plastic is, but it's incredibly soft. I mean, and flexible. It's not that stretchy, although it does have some stretch to it, but it's like cooked spaghetti. And if you imagine trying to shove this down a Bowden tube, you can see why printing with flexible filament is so difficult, especially for Bowden uh, machines. A direct extruder machine where the motor sits right on top of the extruder with a reasonably well-constrained filament path has less of a problem with flexible materials. Now the standard model to print with flexible materials is the octopus. I don't happen to have uh, the specific um, uh, site for this octopus. I printed it a while back using the Maker Geeks on my, um, on my Kodama Trinus machine. And you can see some of the uh, characteristics of flexible plastics. So these thinner, smaller ends, the, the end of the tentacle, are very soft, very springy, and you can actually pull them and stretch them, but as you can see, if you pull too hard, they will deform. They don't spring back. Um, the, the body, however, has, it's a reasonable amount of fill. I think this is with 70% uh, infill. This is hard. You can't depress it. But the feel of it, the outside feel, is soft, like a rubber band. So this is the material I chose to use to test the QQ with regard to flexible filaments, because I figured if it could handle uh, a filament that you can actually not, then it should be able to handle most flexibles. I decided to use the wireframe skull as my model in doing the flexible filament test. I wanted to test the full capabilities of the printer utilizing this difficult material. Printing with flexible filament requires a somewhat different mindset than standard filament. You want to maintain a steady flow of material through the nozzle so as to avoid any excessive back pressure which would cause the material to kink in the Bowden tube or in the extruder. On the other hand, flexible filament adheres really well to the print bed, so you don't really have to have a heated bed for it. Since I did have a heated bed on the QQ, I decided to heat it to 60 degrees centigrade. I was using MakerGeek's MakerFlex filament, 
which calls for a 210 degrees centigrade extrusion temperature but I had printed with it previously and found that I got a better flow at 225 degrees centigrade. Starting the printing process on the QQ involves engaging the auto loading routine to insert the filament. Surprisingly, the extruder had no difficulty feeding the soft plastic through either itself or the Bowden tube. As the filament entered the preheated hot end, I was watching carefully. The last material printed on this machine was MakerGeek's PETG which has a printing temperature of 255 degrees centigrade, which is the temperature I preheated the hot end to for the loading process so as to be able to purge any remaining PETG from the nozzle. The QQ was able to not only feed the flexible filament into the hot end, it was able to provide enough pressure to purge all of the remaining PETG and start the flow of flexible filament through the nozzle. I lowered the temperature to 255 degrees centigrade thereafter for printing. I had programmed a skirt of five revolutions at five millimeters from the print to prime the nozzle properly. By the end of the skirt, the nozzle was flowing freely. As can be seen in these videos of the building print, the QQ had absolutely no problem handling flexible filament. It is helpful when printing with flexibles to print slowly. The faster you print, the more pressure the extruder is required to put on the filament to supply the hot end with sufficient material to maintain an even flow at higher velocities. With flexibles, that increased pressure causes compression along the entire distance from the drive gear to the hot end. Since flexibles will bend given the opportunity, this increased pressure will cause them to bend wherever they find an opening. Those machines that have a fully constrained filament path, meaning that there is nowhere for the filament to go along its path other than where it's supposed to go, have the best results with flexible filaments. Most extruders for instance, have an unconstrained filament path immediately above and below the drive gear. That unconstrained area is generally very small and of no consequence to standard filaments. Flexible filaments, however, will quickly bend into those unconstrained areas and thereafter flow out that area instead of being pushed where it's supposed to go. You can generally print guides for those unconstrained areas for the occasional times that you want to print flexibles. However, if you intend to print flexible filaments on a regular basis and your machine has that type of an extruder that allows flexibles to bend out of the filament path, you might want to consider an extruder designed specifically for printing flexibles. The Flexion extruder is one of these. Although I haven't been able to closely examine the extruder on the QQ because it's hidden underneath the top cover, I would say that it has clearly demonstrated that it has a fully constrained filament path useful for flexible filaments in this video. The filament had absolutely no problem auto feeding, getting down to the hot end or being extruded. And here you go. Here is the skull printed in uh, Maker Flex. I would say that the QQ handles flexible filaments uh, extremely well. There's some uh, stringing and some little nibs on the model. But part of that is because in order to handle flexible filament without an issue, you really have to turn retraction off. Uh, the retraction of the flexible filament doesn't really work because it does stretch, and when it's, especially when it's hot, uh, that stretch will suck plastic up into the uh, cool block and cause uh, jams. And also, it doesn't really stop the 
stringing because since it's stretching, uh, it's not giving any sort of immediate relief to the hot end. So I had to turn those off, which created some stringing. But considering it's a Bowden machine, um, this is an extremely good example of uh, printing with flexible filaments. So I would say the answer to the question is yes, the QQ handles flexible filaments as well or better than any other Bowden machine I've ever used. So there it is. I want to thank everybody for watching and for your interest in the channel. Uh, if you'd like to see our future videos, be sure to subscribe and to click on the bell to be notified as the videos come out. My next video is probably going to be an introduction to myself and the reasons for the channel's existence. Um, we're going to follow that hopefully with introductory videos at the very basics of 3D printing. Definitions, descriptions of parts, things like that, so that anybody getting into this hobby will have uh, a place to go for a strong understanding of what's necessary. Have a great day.